This is map number two of a best of three here, as I switch it all over. Merry go round is the map, and we have got game number two here. 1 0 up at the moment for our Terran. Who is going to be able to take it? Spawning to the south, representing Alien Invasion, the yellow Protoss player. We've got CPU. And his opponent, up to the top left, representing Alien Invasion as well, Lilla Kennen. Now, game number one. Let's recap that for anyone who maybe didn't see it. It was pretty cool actually, because we saw Lilla Kennen employ a mech strategy, very defensive, turtle orientated build. He crushed two armies in a row, and then kind of switched into more of a, a Sky Terran force, a lot of Banshees in there. And due to the very high Immortal Count of CPU, just didn't have enough anti-air in order to deal with that. So uh, lost the third fight very convincingly, allowing CPU, uh, sorry, allowing Lilla Cannon to take that win. This game, I would argue that build isn't as viable. And the big reason for that is because of the fact that while the natural base is going to be quite easy to hold, the third base option is a lot more tough. There's also a lot more area exposed to air, potentially allowing those immortal drops to come through. And that could lead to some problems. I'm also very excited to see what this probe is doing, actually. Where are you going, probe? Okay, proxy Stargate. I'm calling it right now. I don't even know how many probes and gas, but there's... Okay, there's not going up to three in each. Okay, so this is a super rush. Okay, I know why. The SCV's in there. Because this SCV's in, he doesn't want to give away what he's doing. So it's delaying the gases a little. But it also means that Lilikan may not immediately get information about what's coming, or knowing that it's going to be a lot of tech. Anyway. Over at Lilikan inside, he's just chilling, adding in that factory now. Very similar opening to what we saw from him uh, in the game number one. He'll be positioned here from CPU. He's actually bring the pylon down slightly off of position. Maybe often goes for a proxy in this location. If you do often go for a proxy in this location, up against a teammate, you don't want to do it there because, hey, they know where it's likely to be. Meanwhile, CPU, um, just going to be adding that Stargate right on cue. Nilla Cannon, expanding, most likely, um, off the back of this. May actually, no, actually won't expand off the back of this immediately. First, we should see a starport, considering the amount of gas that's coming through. And we are just getting basically an identical build to what we saw uh, last game. The Widow Mine coming through, and this is really good. It, it worked quite nicely. If you think back to game number one, Lilla Cannon was able to rack up, I believe it was 19 probe kills, just through that first Widow Mine drop play. And that's, like, really effective. So, yeah, let's just keep an eye on what happens. Lilla Cannon is already scouting around. And, okay, this was definitely somewhere that... Okay, first, it's a really common place to proxy. Let's just get that out there. But secondly, it's quite likely that, obviously, CPU proxies there quite a bit. And Lilla Cannon may be aware. Is he going to come and check up? Here he is! Ah, oh, this is so nice. Sees it coming. Knows that Oracle's on its way. Instantly starts attacking it. Marines immediately are pulled back. And note the Widow Mine. That will deal with the Oracle by itself. We've got the Engineering Bay block at the Natural Base. And this is just a huge amount of frustration piling onto, uh, piling onto CPU. It puts a lot of pressure. Because he's been scouted, he's got to do something with this Oracle. Um, but because he's been scouted, it's going to be really, really hard in order to make that work. In comes the Oracle now. It's going to be just... Weaving about. The Marines are actually trying to bait it back into the mine. CPU's too smart for that though. He's like, I've seen one mine. Where's the other one? Picking off quite a few workers. Wow, that was a that was a curse of death right there. Killed a decent number, four workers. Not really worth it for an oracle though. Generally you're looking for like eight before it dies to call it a cost effective trade. Meanwhile, Lilla Cannon, he's just chilling back here. He's Got his starport ready and waiting. He knows that his opponent cannot have expanded. So he's probably wondering what's coming. What is there in terms of information? Has a scan been ready utilized? No. Knows there's a pylon down here. May opt to get a scan down. Just try and see. Probably quite wise. May not even consider this as a thing. Due to the Stargate having been proxied, he might be like, okay, well, 
maybe he's just going through a lot of gates. A blink all in at this stage is hitting so much later than it normally would because of the gas tied up in the Oracle of the Stargate here. It's just not as strong as it could have been if it was just off the bat. So Lila Cannon, he's just waiting. I'd like to see him expand uh, relatively soon because he doesn't have anything to outright win yet. And he just needs to be a bit more... I don't want him to expand down here. Okay, I don't want a low ground expansion from him. Because the trouble is, if he did that, there'd be a lot of problems. It would be easy for the Blink Stalkers to get in. Expansion up in the main, though, would be quite good. And especially since he still hasn't seen any of this coming or have any knowledge of it to my, my belief. Okay, just see something now. Needs to be really careful. That medevac goes down. It's a huge problem. And down it goes. That is devastating. As problems come, that is, like, huge. That's... That's massive, because that was a good chunk of his army supply. Dead and gone. Should still be able to hold, thanks to these mines. And tanks, it's going to be difficult to go up. Ooh, that... Careful, Mothership Corps. Out come the Stalkers, they go blink directly on top of the tank, avoiding that Widow Mine. Both tanks are going to get taken down. See, he's just got a huge amount of stuff. And due to that medevac full of units going down, there isn't much for Lila Cannon. He doesn't have enough infantry in order to stop this at the moment. Another tank is about to pop out, of course, we do have the Widow Mine. If that gets a good detonation, which it will now. Oh, nice blink. Great reaction. Suddenly, CPU is getting a decent amount of damage now. Is it enough? He hasn't expanded behind this one. Right? And without that expansion, he's got to make sure that he really cripples the Little Cannon. Little Cannon is actually holding his off now. Haven't pulled quite a few SCBs, but note that these Stalkers have nowhere to go. There's no escape path to the back, so a lot of them starting to pull. The tank coming over as well, trying to get a bit more damage through. But this is allowing more and more SCBs to die. Three Stalkers about to back out, but four more reinforcing their way through. Ready to blink up onto the high ground. Mine tries to detonate, but a blink away means safety. Overall, the resources lost, fairly similar. The work count, favoring CPU, but he's not looking for a long game. Reinforcing with a lot more Stalkers, and the pressure is all on Lilla Cannon to make sure that he holds this off if he wants to win the series here. Great blink up, takes down the tank, the Marauder also going to fall. The Bunker getting a decent amount of damage down. Remember, the danger, that's all sitting at that SCV line. If these Stalkers get over there, since there isn't really too much in order to defend them, it's going to be a lot harder. The Marauder is able to survive. The SCV is being pulled across. They just want to prevent these Stalkers moving out of range of this Bunker. Two more of the Stalkers. Starting to fall. CPU though, he's got a massive army supply lead, so GG is cool. CPU levels out this series to make it 1 1.